I don't really remember how the name came to be. I used to have a really long list of potential band names for a couple of years and I'd never really released music and I figured that list was just a, a procrastination exercise or a, a mechanism for not publicizing my work. And so one day I just scrolled through and picked one and that was on there. For the life of me, I can't really remember when or how it got there. And at first it, was, it wasn't my main pick, Mount St. Helen. But after a while, I just, I don't know, I think it sounds like the music. And, and that's enough. I think for me being in this band, it's a totally new experience. Um, I've done a lot of music, but I've been coming from a totally different background more. Um, like funk and soul music, pop music, um, playing in big ensembles where um, there's horns and loads of singers and full rhythm section with keyboards and everything. So I think it's a much you know, I'm suddenly much more in a smaller group, there's a lot more spotlight on you and it's very, it's a really exciting challenge.
Routine is essentially a song about nostalgia. Um, stylistically, it looks backwards to 90s shoegaze, a genre that I grew up loving and got me through you know, adolescence. And especially coming and moving to Oxford, seeing that whole scene and the venues and the landmarks of the time that was, uh, was really inspiring. 19 is also like a very dynamic song. You know, playing it, it goes up and down a lot and it's constantly fluctuating. And, you know, with these contrasting elements that it has, you know, it's looking back in nostalgia, but it's also, as we step onto stage, it's acting as kind of like an introduction for what's to come. This kind of, it's pulling you in both ways. And we feel that every time that we step on stage, it's kind of anxiety, but also excitement and, it's something that we really want to share with whoever's listening every time we play it. Pariahs started with the passing of my grandmother a couple of years ago. Um, she was a, a violin player, a really, really great one, and in her will she left me her violin, well, her two violins, and I brought it over from Greece uh, to London, and I'm not a violin player myself. Uh, I, was brought up playing cello, um, but I started to pluck, pluck it and layer it, and found this really rigid pattern, like kind of Steve Reich inspired, um, and just looped it for like three minutes. And then I was, as I was listening to it, I was trying to like remember her and her teachings, her philosophies, and I was talking to my dad a lot uh, about how she was as a mother, and he kept on saying that the main philosophy that she had for her children was to be free thinkers, free thought, stand on your own two feet. And so listening against this really rigid violin pattern, I started to think about free thinkers or people who challenge the norms, who challenge the dogmas that are instilled by other people. And for I essentially is that, it's a celebration of differing thought. Lyrically, you've got a political pariah, you've got your religious pariah, you've got your social pariah, and in the last like big blowout bit, you get this amalgamation of the characters. It's kind of like a an outlaw dance party. And I think that that elation of of all these different misfits from different places, John Bender, Joan of Arc, Lenin, all in one place musically, creates this real celebration of difference. Uh, and of of the the philosophy that my that my grandma really wanted to install in my dad, and I think he he's done that to me, at least in the musical sense as well. And I'm very I'm very grateful for that.
of arc in a song rebel sparks and a flare in his palm so turn to face the crowd before we harvest now would you promise to stand your ground <laughs> So much of the final recordings, um, they sound much more coming from like a sound design perspective than a composition perspective. I think that was what struck me originally when me and Aris had our first rehearsal, just the two of us, um, was when I heard everything for the first time. It was a soundscape. It was half music, half sound design. And that's what I thought was really exciting and interesting about yeah, this. Yeah, I, re I remember that one actually. Yeah, I remember that. There was a it was really great to just see somebody else share it. There wasn't just me or Francesco listening to it on headphones and playing it for the first time, like as a real live entity. It was, yeah, it was, it was a good feeling. Yeah. Good feeling. <laughs> it's a strange feeling coming into adulthood when it seems like everything is wrong with the world all the time and you get fed it in 30 second, 15 second clips yesterday, today and tomorrow. And so that anxiety and bombardment kind of set the landscape for helpless. I found myself one day writing in in a garden, like on a meadow, right on a on a lake with them, with Francesco's guitar, and thinking about if there were such things as higher powers, what what would they think at the at the mess we've made, so to speak? And so on one hand, it's a really pessimistic song. But the backdrop of that sonically is something really ethereal and again like to do like taking from post-rock and shoegaze there's again this tension of of really like helplessness and hopelessness forsakenness but also hope and the main message of helpless I think is, is carpe diem reaching for the stars and reaching for the skies when the world is on fire. I think the first time we got into a room and nailed helpless yeah. it was one of i think the best moments of my musical career <laughs> really really good it's like yeah. everything clicked and that ending is just massive yeah i think the last section the way it's written it's really pays homage and pays tribute to antiphony and sacred choral music and after talking about how doomsday is upon us the the last section tries to ascend and, and take off. And I think if there was ever a manifesto for what Mount St. Helen would sound like, it would be that last final longing for, for the sky and, and heaven. Now, and it got us 
so for real She would have left us by now If there really is a paradise And I'm sure it is noisy If there really is a world on fire Then I'm sure it looks pretty from up here Starts to fall We'll be tearing down the walls When this earth starts to burn It'll be our final turn To dance this dance And live our only final chance Before we tear this world apart now But you sure do look pretty on my day To heaven, she would have gone and changed the locks. If there ever was a stairway, she would have painted it like a lie. If you scream their names loud enough, do you ever think they'd listen? Would they give us the time of day? Though we got nothing left to say, but oh my dear. Starts to fall We'll be tearing down the walls When this earth starts to burn It'll be our final turn To dance this dance And live our only final chance Before we tear this world apart now But you sure